So if we want to find the confidence interval for variance in standard deviation, then we need another distribution. The z and the t won't work. So what we're going to use is the chi-square distribution. So here's the symbol. So it's kind of like a curly x and it's square. So chi-square distribution. Um, and I've, I've included a link here in the notes. So if you happen to have the notes, you can take this link to one online if you don't happen to have a book or a table. I actually have a table that I'm going to use. So I have a picture here. This is what it looks like in general. Um, it is based on degrees of freedom, and there are n minus 1, where n is your sample size. Um, but again, looking at our shape, we would call this a right skewed graph. The total area is 1 um, degrees of freedom. As n gets big, so as your sample size gets big, our curve becomes more and more symmetric. So it starts kind of getting pulled to the right so that the, um, right, the, it looks more like a normal distribution. And finally, all chi-square values are positive. All right, so before we go finding confidence intervals, we're going to practice just finding those critical values, those, those chi-square values. So confidence intervals, we're talking about those middle values, the middle 95%, 90%, 99%, whatever confidence level it is you're looking for. So this means that we have to split the alpha, right, the leftover, into the left and right part. Okay. So if we look at a 95% confidence level, that means so alpha is the amount left over, so that would be 5%. So that our alpha over 2, so that we can share it, is going to be 2.5%, or as a decimal, 0 0.025. Okay. So let's go ahead and I've, I've copied in a, a chi-square graph. Um, so let's write out what we mean by a 95% confidence interval, where all of those areas are. Okay. So 95% in the middle, and that means I have 2.5% two, two on each tail. Okay. So here's how we're going to use the chi-square distribution. So let's go ahead and we'll say that n is 10. So we're just going to find these values. So the way we label these, so this one over here we call chi-square right, because it's on the right side, and this one here, chi-square left, again, because it's on the left. So if we look at this particular chi-square distribution table, down at the bottom, I'm going to show you, here is the key for reading this particular table. So wherever that chi-square value is, the area, the alpha that we see up at the top, corresponds to how much is right of the chi-square value. Okay. So for this particular example, if n is 10, that means degrees of freedom would be 9. And to find chi-square right, my alpha value, since my table is set up to look for the amount to the right, I need to find the alpha value of 0 0.025. So we're going to go across the top of the table until alpha, we find alpha is 0 0.025, and there it is. And then we're going to come down until we get to 9. So here's the 9, and we're going to find where those two meet. So 19.023. Uh, 0.025, so chi-square right is 19.023. Now to find chi-square left, just because of how my table is set up, I need to look for the alpha value that contains all of the area to the right of this value. So that's the 95% plus the 2.5%. So for chi-square left, the alpha that I need to use is 0.975. Okay. So that corresponds to a chi-square left value of, so and there it is, 0.975, and we'll come down to the 9 and 2.7. 
they should work out numerically so that your chi-square left value is smaller than your chi-square right value. If that doesn't happen, then you know something's gone amiss. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice. So let's find the chi-square left, chi-square right values, and then we'll draw the pictures. So n is 8, 90% confidence level. So I just go ahead and grab anywhere. So 90% in the middle. Chi-square, I typically label these on the bottom just so that I'm sure. Chi-square left and chi-square right. So if it's 90% confident, that means that I've got 10% to share. So 5% on each side. So for the right side, right, the part I need, I'm going to look up alpha of 0 0.05, because that's how much is to the right of that chi-square right value. But my degrees of freedom are 7, so that my chi-square right value, 0 0.05, down to the 7, find where they meet, 14.067. Then to find your chi-square left, that alpha value is the 90 plus the 5, so 0.95. Degrees of freedom are still 7, so 0.95 down to the 7, 2.167. If you want to pause and see if you can do this next one without me, Okay, 99% in the middle. That means I have 1% to share. So it's going to be a half a percent in each tail. So be careful, half a percent, because my table doesn't have the percent symbol. It goes into the decimal versions. Right, so 0.5% as a decimal is 0 0.005. Okay, and N is 23, so our degrees of freedom are 22. So we're going to be working on that row 22. So for my chi-square right, I'm going to look up 0 0.005, which is the furthest right column, and I'm going to come down to the 22. 42.796, there's no need to round. 7, 9, 6. And for chi-square left, I need to do, right, the 99.995. So that's going to be my furthest to the left value. So take that one all the way down to 22. So 8.643. All right, so that's how we find our critical value. So let's go ahead and do a confidence interval. So we need a point estimate. So for estimating variance, so remember sigma squared, this is the population variance, the thing we're going to be estimating. Um, so the point estimate would be the variance for our sample. So that would just be S squared. And then the interval estimate. So this looks completely different than the others that we've done so far. Um, so we're estimating the population variance. So it is equal to, it, will, it is between n minus 1 times s squared, the variance for our sample, divided by chi-square left. Notice the chi-square left is actually on the right side. That's why it's important to keep your labels. And then for the left side of our inequality, it's n minus 1 s squared over chi-square right. And then if we happen to be doing standard deviation, our point estimate would simply be S instead of S squared, and then the interval estimate, we just simply take the square root of um, the variance all the way around. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an example. So I did a very unscientific study, and I collected a sample of 15 houses and apartments for rent in Chelan County. And then I did some one variable statistics on my calculator, and this is what I found, this little screenshot. So let's find the 95% confidence level. For the variance, so we're looking at sigma squared, of the rentals. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture so I can get my chi-square values. So 95% in the middle, 
So two and a half percent on the sides. My N is 15. So my degrees of freedom are 14. Notice it has an N over here, so you can check and make sure I got it okay. So my chi-square right and my chi-square left. That's kind of our starting spot. So chi-square right, I'm going to go 0 0.025. And I'm going to come down to the 14. 26, oops, sorry, I up here. 26.119 is where those two parts meet. So 26. 0.119, and for chi-square left, remember we add these two together, that's just how my particular table set up. So 0.975 and the 14, so 5.629. And then I'm done with my table, so I can go ahead and move that aside. And now, I'm just going to build up that formula. So a lot of statistics is building on these formulas. Okay, so I'm going to look up here, all the way up, scroll. Can we see both of them sort of? OK, so I need n minus 1, so that's 14, times s squared. Well, here I'm going to look at my screenshot. My s is 418.21, right? And we need to square that. And then we divide by chi-square left. So chi-square left is 5.629. So notice even though it's on the right-hand side, we're going to use the left value because that's the smaller one, so that gives us the bigger value for the left-hand side. Now when we go to make our right side, it looks almost the same, except for that value on the bottom changes to be the chi-square right value. And then it's just right, grabbing your calculator and punching in those values. So 14 times 418.21 squared divided by 26.119. So I had to square because what I happen to know in this case was the standard deviation, and I'm talking about the variance. Okay, so that's why I squared the standard deviation that I had here. So we can be... Boy, that's a big number. 93.747.63, I guess. The variance is between, let me get the right side. I'm just changing that bottom number. 464.996.35. Mm -hmm. So we can be 95% sure that the true variance is between these two numbers. Now that doesn't, right, most of us don't live in a world of variances. So let's go ahead and do the same, same calculation or the same confidence level for standard deviation. So to do that, all I need is the square root of what we've already done. So I'm just going to go ahead and square root both of those values, get something that means a little bit more to me. So how varied are the rents in Chelan County? How variable? So we can be 95% sure that the variance in rents have their variability is somewhere between $306 and $659.